Hi, I'm Kristen. I'm a Zoe Life health coach, author, and speaker. And most importantly, I'm head of your hills in love with Jesus. I am passionate about people living a healthier, more fulfilling, purposeful life. It is my desire to see our bodies outlast the calling that God has in our lives. And so if you're interested in learning about how to grow a deep, deeper relationship with the Lord, spirit, soul, body, wholeness, and fullness, or simply how to make tweaks, I call them choose life choices, for you and your story to position yourself for more of God's blessings, then subscribe to this channel. Okay. In this video, the choose life choice I'm recommending is to really evaluate your freedom and your bondage when it comes to food. As we're celebrating freedom on this in day, Independence Week, we know that Galatians 5.1 says, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. And then it even continues to say in Galatians, but don't use your freedom to then be enslaved into another yoke of bondage. And that can be in regards to religion or all sorts of things, but specifically even with food, we know that in our relationship with the Lord, we do not have to eat a certain way. There is not a right way to eat and a wrong way to eat. And some people may tell you to, that is true. We'll have another conversation about that for today. I just want to say, no, there is freedom. There's choose life choices of what's the best fuel for your vehicle, for your body to operate from. But in your freedom, may you not put a yoke on somebody else, a bondage, a slavery on someone else, and even your own self as to this is what's right and this is what's wrong. We know that if you do so, that it's like eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil says this is a right and a wrong way. This is a good and bad thing. And we know eating from that tree, that fruit leads to death. And Proverbs says, there is a way that seems right to man, but in the end leads to death. As choose life first, we are determined to eat from the modern day tree of life, which is a person. His name is Jesus. And he is the way and the truth and the life. And when we eat in communion, in conversation from a place of intimacy and rest in Jesus, we realize that we can have more foods, but we're not enslaved to greed, enslaved to idolatry. We're not enslaved to finding comfort in food or friendship with food. There's freedom that when we get hungry, our bodies will tell us when we're hungry. We don't need anything external, necessarily like a clock to tell us when we're hungry. Our body will tell us when the fuel tank is low. We just simply make it the choose the choice of what's the best fuel for this vehicle, for this body. The scripture I wanted to offer you to meditate on to help bring more freedom into your life, into your relationship with food is Colossians chapter two and specifically verses 20 through 23. And there's a few versions I want to highlight. One talks about us receiving directly from the Lord and we do not instead go back to all of these external things telling us do not taste, do not touch, do not do this, do not do that. These are doctrines of men and corrupt customs that are worthless to help your spiritual growth. For though they may appear to possess the promise of wisdom in their submission to God through the deprivation of their physical bodies, it is actually nothing more than empty rules rooted in religious rituals. And then even some versions say control. I like the NIV, it says, these regulations indeed have an appearance of wisdom with their self-imposed worship, their false humility, and their harsh treatment of the body, but they lack no value of sensual indulgence. Again, it's external telling you do this and do that. You can eat this and eat that at these time frames. You know, perhaps you don't want almonds at 10 a.m. Perhaps when your body needs more fuel, you can decide then like, what is the best fuel for my body now? Instead of having things external telling you what to do. We know God's people in the Old Testament, the Israelites wanted that to happen. They wanted, hey, folks, as you go up and have communion and conversation and intimacy with the Lord and come back and tell us what to do. But we know the Lord's heart is constant conversation, communication with each one of us. And that's why his home is residing in your heart. If you've said yes to Jesus, he lives inside you. So you don't need the external. You can have that connection with him and you it can turn up the volume, gain clarity, like a microscope, like getting clarity and focus with exactly what he's saying in his word. You'll start to gather what he likes, what he doesn't like. 
his goodness, his nature, his kindness, his gentleness, where he has self-control, where he's stronger and firmer on other things. Self-control as far as maybe like teaching a toddler that he has a parent. You can be lenient with some things when you're little, but as they get older, like the standard gets a little tougher. Like, no, we don't do that. It's, you know better than that. But maybe the consequence is a little bit stronger. All that to say that we sometimes are looking for the external telling us to do instead of gaining character internally, which is in these scriptures, lacking no value for sensual indulgence instead of restraining that. And so internally to, to build self-control, to build restraint, uh, just the less of our eyes and of wanting them, the more when it comes to food or the more when it comes to really anything, often a lot of people get caught up in the more it's never enough. Can't be thankful and content with what I have. Must have more, must have more. They appear the same scripture, another version. Listen, if you've dined with the anointed one to the elemental spirits of the cosmos, then why are you submitting yourself to its rules as if you still belong to this world? You hear these strict regulations of don't handle this, don't taste that, don't even touch that, for it's wrong. But everything they are obsessed with will eventually decay. These rules are just human commands and teachings. This isn't from the Lord. Here's what they are promoting. Fabricated religion, self-humiliation, and bodily abuse. No matter which may they may try to tether their bodies, they cannot harness their inward desires. And so in connection, in conversation, in communion with the Lord, we can build on self-control and restraining sensual indulgence and a life of thanksgiving and rest and peace and ease. We don't have to have the more whatever we smell or see or hear um, food in the other room. Instead, we can just live it more content. And then in that contentment of my body's hungry, I'm going to eat till I have enough fuel to function on and then the rest for the next provision, the next time I need more fuel. So I just want to encourage you to meditate on Colossians 2 verses 20 through 23. And ask the Lord, perhaps what ways are you eating from the modern day tree of the knowledge of good and evil and not experiencing the freedom that he offers you, but instead putting a yoke of slavery, a yoke of bondage upon you again. And in what ways that he's inviting you to freedom? What can you let go? I look forward to telling you a number of ways that I was once upon a time experiencing so much bondage. I remember in my early college days, I like knew every label to everything. How many calories, how many fat grams, how much protein, how much sugars. I just had it all memorized. And now 25 years later, my brain is used for other things, more important things, just loving the Lord, my God, with all my heart, mind, soul, and strength, thinking of thoughtful things for people celebrating special days, birthdays, or anniversaries, or moments, and calling them and reaching out to them. I use my brain for more important things than memorizing labels, but that was one of the ways the enemy was stealing from me. But I just said, no. I agreed in line with the Lord in his word and saying, no, I will no longer be in slavery in this way. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. So that's the choose life choice offering today. The spirit, soul, body approach, God's word, overflowing your soul and letting your body take hold of it. And then that's, you'll experience a beautiful weight loss too. All right. Much love to you. Talk to you soon. Mm-hmm.